Although not a federation, China's administrative divisions do kind of resemble a federal state. And since we're talking about such a huge country, that should be no surprise. It's bloody hard to maintain big places. Nevertheless, we don't have states or republics or oblasts in China. We have provinces and autonomous regions. And a select few cities are a thing on their own. China has four municipalities that are important enough to have equal status to that of the provinces. And Tianjin is one of them. Hi, my name is Sebastian and you're watching 7 Facts. Right next to Beijing, one of the largest and busiest cities in the world, lies yet another one of the largest and busiest cities in the world, Tianjin. This city is so important for China that it's governed separately, not as a province but as a municipality under the direct administration of the Chinese government. With a total population of 13.9 million, this is of course one of the big ones of the world. Add to this its metropolitan area and you get 15 to 16 million inhabitants. Mind you, this is a city, not a province. Oh, and if we take into account that Tianjin is part of the Jingjinji megalopolis of over 100 million residents, yeah, you get the picture, this place is crowded. And it ain't just crowded, it's roaring. Hundreds of the world's biggest companies are present in Tianjin and its GDP is one of the highest in all of China. For this and many other reasons, Tianjin is considered to be one of the top 100 financial centers in the world. Now, if you want to understand how this place got to be so big and important, you gotta ask about the history. Which is precisely what we're gonna talk about next. The land of Tianjin is a young one. Because various rivers, including the mighty Yellow River, enter the sea in this region, the lands of Tianjin are mostly alluvial and have changed their shape and size throughout history. And I know that's not necessarily a history lesson, but it did help shape the city's history. Because long, long ago, one of mankind's greatest projects, the Grand Canal, connected Tianjin and Beijing to the rich grain fields of the south, making this area one of the most important trade routes on the continent. Gradually and through the dynasties, Tianjin grew and gained importance, and by the time the Mongol-led Yuan dynasty took control of China in the 13th century, the city turned into a major location of grain and goods storage which then led to its transformation into a shipping station, then a garrison town and ultimately a center of commerce and prosperity. This was Tianjin in the 17th century by the time the Qing dynasty took power and under them things continued relatively the same way, until that is the 19th century. That's when troubles began, with the Qing facing some major issues internally but also externally the European powers that be began to strongly interfere in China's affairs. In 1856, China already went through one war with the British, the infamous Opium War, but that year, Chinese soldiers boarded the Arrow, a Hong Kong ship flying the British flag that was being suspected of piracy, smuggling and opium trade. Long story short, the Second Opium War happened and a prime target of the war were the Taku forts, just outside Tianjin. The forts were taken and in 1858, the first part of the war was over, the Treaty of Tianjin was signed, which opened this previously closed port to foreigners. And open it did. Between 1895 and 1900, Tianjin had to accept concessions from Great Britain, France, Japan, Germany, Russia and even countries without formal Chinese concessions like Austria-Hungary, Italy or Belgium. And when I say concessions, I mean self-contained parts of the city with their own prisons, schools, barracks, hospitals and their own laws. In these areas, Chinese law did not apply to foreign citizens. So basically, these were tiny but rather profitable little colonies of Europe. Anyway, while opening the city to the international stage did bring in a lot of money, it also brought troubles. Occasional clashes and violent outbursts against the outsiders erupted, like the Tianjin Church Massacre of 1870, when dozens of foreigners died at the hands of furious protesters. This went really haywire in 1900, during the Boxer Rebellion, when again Chinese citizens were outraged by European and Christian influences in China. Tianjin and the foreign concessions were under siege for several weeks, but eight nations, seven European plus the United States, 
defeated the rebels and retook Tianjin. Fast forward to World War II, and we see a belligerent Japan invading China except for the foreign parts of Tianjin. The European concessions remained untouched by the imperial soldiers until a moment in 1939 when six Chinese saboteurs retreated to the British concession, causing the Japanese to blockade the area. It was the British that finally caved and handed over the Chinese, who were of course executed. And it was all in vain of course, because by 1940 all British troops withdrew and war was in the end inevitable. The Japanese occupation of Tianjin lasted right up until the end, August 15, 1945. And then of course the Chinese Civil War made its mark on the city. After 29 hours of fighting, on January 15, 1949, Tianjin fell into the hands of the Communist Party. One last major event was the Tangshan earthquake of 1976 that destroyed two-thirds of the city and killed tens of thousands of people. Since then, Tianjin continuously developed into the modern, prosperous and cosmopolitan city that we know today. If you paid attention at the beginning, you remember I said that Tianjin is part of the Jingjinji megalopolis. But what exactly is that thing? Well, that is a vast urban region in northern China that encompasses the cities of Beijing, Tianjin and parts of Hebei province. It's called a megalopolis or super city because it's one continuous urban area with common or connected systems of transport, economy, resources, ecology and so on. The Jing Jinji megalopolis is home to over 130 million people, making it one of the most populous regions in the world. Tianjin is part of this region, contributing to one of the largest economic machines of the world. Taken separately, it's the fourth largest city in China and one of the country's most important ports, handling over 500 million tons of cargo annually. Tianjin is also a major industrial and economic hub in the region with a GDP of over $280 billion. It's also been designated as one of the key cities in this development plan and the government has invested heavily in infrastructure projects in Tianjin, including the construction of a new airport and the expansion of the port. And it's all worth it. Jing Jinji, which by the way is also China's capital region, currently has a GDP the size of Mexico. 1.5 trillion dollars. On the downside, this single urban area is responsible for 10% of China's greenhouse gas emissions. Those concessions we talked about, they're an interesting topic but they're not totally a thing of the past. Remnants of the European dominance in Tianjin are still around. And probably the most eye-catching of them all is the Italian concession. Established in 1901, the area was located on the banks of the Haihe River and covered an area of about 46 hectares. It was a center of trade and commerce and colonization with many Italian businesses and residents settling here. That's all a thing of the past now, but what remained are the buildings. The concession was known for its beautiful buildings and gardens. Despite its small size, the area was known to be a cultural center with many Italian schools, churches and cultural institutions and a cosmopolitan atmosphere and lively social scene. Today, many of the original buildings and landmarks in the concession have been preserved and restored and the area is a popular destination for tourists and history enthusiasts. If you wish to steer away from European architecture and seek a more traditional looking area, look no further than Guanhua Jie, better known as the Ancient Cultural Street. Located in the Nankai district of Tianjin, this street is lined with beautiful buildings and shops, many of which date back to the Qing dynasty. For this reason, the area is known first and foremost for its cultural heritage and many of the shops and stalls on the street sell traditional Chinese arts and crafts such as calligraphy, painting and embroidery. Guanhua Jie is also home to several important cultural landmarks such as the Temple of the Queen of Heaven, a historic Taoist temple that dates back to the Ming Dynasty, or the Guanfu Museum or the Tianhu Palace dedicated to the sea goddess Mazu. In addition to its cultural heritage, Guanhua Jie is also known for its beautiful architecture. The buildings on the street are a mix of different architectural styles, but the Qing era buildings dominate. 
What's important is that many of the buildings have been carefully restored and preserved, giving visitors a glimpse into Tianjin's rich history and culture. It looks like this video is turning into a tourist ad for Tianjin, but there's yet another area worth mentioning here. The Five Great Avenues, or Wudadao. This collection of streets is yet again a historic area in the city that is known for its beautiful architecture and unique cultural heritage. But it's also an upscale residential area and a tourist trap. In Wudadao, there are over 230 buildings of all kinds, from the architecture of Britain, France, Italy, Germany and Spain. Over 50 of them have been occupied by celebrities. Wudadao of course appeared in the foreign concessions era and was a place where many Chinese and European residents built their mansions and villas. The buildings on the five avenues are a mix of different architectural styles including Baroque, Renaissance, Gothic, Romantic and Art Deco. Today, most of these buildings are in top shape and host art galleries, museums, performance venues and cultural festivals. But it's not just the past that gives Tianjin its spark. The city has undergone a major transformation in recent years and although it's known for its rich history and heritage, Tianjin is also a city that has embraced modern architecture and urban development. In recent decades, the city has seen a surge in the construction of innovative and futuristic buildings. One of the most iconic examples of modern architecture here is the Tianjin Eye, a giant ferris wheel that is over 120 meters tall, offering visitors stunning views of the city skyline and the Haihe River. Another notable example of modern architecture is the Tianjin Museum, which is a beautiful example of contemporary Chinese architecture with a sleek and modern design that blends seamlessly with its surroundings. One spectacular building is the Tianjin Binhai Library, nicknamed the Eye, and this is one of the main attractions in the whole city actually. It features floor-to-ceiling terraced bookshelves, able to hold 1.2 million books and a large luminous sphere in the center that serves as an auditorium. This place just looks cool, period. The skyline is of course completed by many large and small skyscrapers, new financial and residential districts and other urban developments. While not perfect of course, this city is surely one of the most exciting places to be in China right now. And that's all for today's episode, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave. Leave your comments downstairs and if you wish to do so, you can help out this channel through my Patreon page. I do hope to see you next time, bye.